Welcome to the Rose of Sharon radio broadcast, where you are destined to smell the sweet aroma of the truth in accordance with Ephesians 4.15, guaranteed to make you free to lead the abundant life till it overflows. The time is now and the person is you. So sit back, relax, grab your Bible, some paper and a pen, as we welcome our host, Sharon Green. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. This is Sharon Green, and you're listening to the Rose of Sharon Show on the Survival Radio Christian Network. And I so love that little short song. It actually came from my Bible. But we are a family, and we need to start thinking like a family as opposed to individuals. And so I love how it talks about just come as you are because we are the family of God. We are the family of love. That's who we are. And until we grow up to know that, we can't be unified. And if we don't ever figure out how to be unified and on one accord with the word and the will of God led by Holy Spirit, we as a body cannot experience God's faithful presence in the earth. Faith has the ability to get us the stuff we need after the fact, and we can continue to be all excited about that, but that is not the will of God for his children. He created us to be just like his son, that he is made large through our lives. And since we serve such a great God, an awesome, wonderful father who loves us, I don't know about you, but I'm excited about his presence. I'm excited about revealing who he is through my life, that the world may see my good works and glorify my Father, which are in heaven. And that's an individual. And so if I can just get connect with some people who truly love and adore the Father, not because he did anything for you, but because he is so wonderful and he's amazing by himself, and he's worthy of our attention and our obedience. And so a family is not known by your last name. A family is known by your father. And so he created us to be a father. 
why our children can't go nowhere. They can't leave the house. They can't leave the state because you, you can't leave. We have a fit when our children. You don't know anybody. Well, good. Go somewhere where you don't know anybody. Expand your boundaries. Expand your horizons to know that our Father is faithful. His presence is everywhere. He's omnipresent. He's omnipotent, omniscient, and he's all-powerful. And so when you show up, peace is in the building. And so let's change our thinking, get outside of the parameters of a last name and even a church. Go visit somebody. Go somebody's church if you don't know. I'm not telling you to leave it because every church is not meant for great teaching. But they'll never know what good teaching looks like if none of the saints ever show up to say, hey, where'd you get that from? <laughs> that line up with the word. And we don't do that. That's why tonight we are taking love to another level. And we're going to talk about love as it relates to the truth which is the same, and the myth. And so on tonight, if something triggers it on the inside of you and you have a question or a comment, please, I beg you, please, please, I beseech you to dial in. Just ask it. Don't don't be frustrated about the truth and don't ask questions about it. I'm not making this stuff up. And I will tell you, I don't sit around trying to study to figure out what we're going to talk about on Sunday. That's how I know with everything in me. I was called to do this because it doesn't matter when, where, or who. It come out how Holy Spirit gives it to me. You know, thinking about what to say and where to look and all of that, I don't have those stress or struggles. And so if you're doing anything in ministry and you have stress about it, that's because you're doing it. That's self-effort. That's not being led by the Spirit. Because the preparation of the heart belongs to you, Proverbs 15, but the answer of the tongue belongs to the Father, to the Lord, to the Spirit of God. And he'll never lead you wrong at all. So you can dial in at 347-237-4648. I would love to hear from you as we go on tonight. So if this is your first time listening in to the Rosa Sharon Show, This show is completely, totally dedicated and built upon Ephesians 4 and 15, where we speak the truth in love so that we may grow up in all things into him who is the head. And that's none other than our elder brother, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. It is the will of our Father that we be unified, one accord, in the body of Christ, not as individuals, Iron sharpens iron in the body. Life is found in the body. Peace is found in the body. And so we are called to grow up in all things into him, not into you, into Jesus Christ. Because as he is, according to 1 John 4 and 17, so are we. Love in its true essence has been perfected in and through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that we may come boldly on the day of judgment because we all will have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And when you know who you are in him, you know that love has been perfected. So on the day of judgment, you can come boldly rejoicing because as he is, so are we in this world. It's intentional that the Bible says in this world. We're not waiting to be like Christ. We're not dreaming and have petitions to be like him. We are like him right now because we live in him, and he lives in us, and we live in the Father with him, and we are seated in heavenly places right now because we're a spirit. And so the spirit has to lead. It has to lead, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more on tonight. But I pray that you get something out of the show You know, I thank you all for joining in each week. I thank you all for the birthday wishes over the weekend. You know, it's been a great celebration. And yet it's always time to be about my father's business. And on tonight there is nothing uh, any different. We're going to keep it moving. And so let's talk about some of the myths because they're myths. They're not the truth. We made them the truth, but they are not (laughs) the truth. And so it's time for us to wake up. Let's wake up. Let's wake up. Our Father, Father God, he created all this stuff. 
for his enjoyment. He created us because he can't just walk around the earth any longer. He gave it to us. We are the vessels. We are the hands. We are the feet. We are the mouth. We have all power given in heaven and earth to Jesus who gave it to us, and nothing by no means is supposed to be harming us. And yet we know life for the majority of Christendom looks nothing like that. So let's wake up and say it looks nothing like that. So, Father God, what are we doing wrong? What are we doing wrong? Where Where is the disconnect from your love and, and, and my life? And if you never ask him about the disconnect between his love, who he is, and the life that we're living, then you won't even think that there is anything wrong. Like you're supposed to go through this. We're supposed to have evil mixed with good when he has no evil to give to us. He has no evil to place on us. There is no evil in Father God. He was a judge in the Old Testament. He was the judge and the jury. He did not play. It was his way or no way. And he's the same his way or no way, but he's not the judge any longer because he gave us Jesus. If you study your word and just just study keywords, don't even let me stop that because we, we're so big on reading the Bible in a year and just reading stuff and having no real meaning, no understanding, no application in your heart to do it. He didn't give us a book. He gave us his son. So after you get the foundation, it's time to build upon it. And so the book, yeah, the Bible, great place to start, but the Holy Spirit eventually is supposed to teach you. He can't teach you and you're so stuck on some words on a piece of paper. Those words have to evolve. They have to evolve. And so we have to get past that in order to see who we are in him. And so as we continue on, I just lost my thought just that quick. I don't even know what I was talking about there, but it'll come back to me in a few minutes. But as we still, as we continue on and we recognize that there is a disconnect, then we have to fill the gap in, but not through works. I can't make it happen. I just have to recognize that something is out of order. And once I recognize that, then what's the right thing to do? Obedience is way far better than sacrifice. So what is the obedient thing to do? What is the obedient thing to think and to say? Because it's not through my work and it's not through me sitting up all night studying and reading because now I'm doing something to get when everything I need is on the inside of me. How do I manifest the blessings that's on the inside of me? What is it? What's the trigger of faith that causes grace to evolve in my life? Well, the foundation, as we know, over in Galatians 5 and 6, and I keep saying that, but I never went there. So tonight we're going to go a few places so you can see. You can see for yourself. So if you have your Bible, please open it up to Galatians 5. I don't think I went here, but let's go to Galatians 5. Galatians 5 and 6 says, For in Christ, neither circumcision, we just, the Christians has liberty. They were trying to tell them that they have to do stuff. But Galatians 5 starts out talking about we have liberty. We're free people. Jesus neither circumcision or, un- or, un- or uncircumcision avails anything. But faith works through love. In Christ, it is faith that works through love, agape love, the unconditional love. The love that's a choice. It's not based upon circumstance, situations, and people. It does not change. It is who Father God is. It's who Jesus is, that perfect love, oh, in First John 5, 4, and 17, that casts out all fear. That love causes our faith to be in place. And we don't have after-the-fact faith. I don't even know if I have that down here as a myth. I may add that into that after-the-fact faith. Like, believe for evil and hope that the word works, faith, that's seen throughout Christendom. Instead of having faith that speaks to mountains to get them out your way so that they, they, you have nothing in your path but the peace of God. Because when you walk in wisdom, all of her ways are pleasant. All of her paths are of peace. She is the tree of life to those who grab hold of her, and happy are they who retain her. It's Proverbs 4. 
So when you get to know who you are in Christ, you start learning who you are, and your expectation will change from what you see to what you know. And so we have, we, for those of you listening for the first time, we, and I say we, the body of Christ. It may not be you. If it's not you, that's great. Share you with somebody else so they don't have this problem. But we are in one body, many members. Every joint does its part. So as you see, I started off talking about family. So it's a we. It don't matter what color you are, what denominations you connected yourself to, what color is your skin, or what language you speak. We is a body, one family. And so we, when we have an issue, we have an issue. And so we have been speaking for God a lot and daily and often. God is going to do this. God will make a way. God will provide. God will, we continue to speak on behalf of a father that we don't believe. If you take the time, just Google the word God will. (laughs) In the Old Testament, under the law, they needed Father God to do. So when you're reading anything that's prior to Jesus being crucified, going into the grave, rising and ascending, that is all the way up to, what is it, Acts, where Acts is history. So as in Mark, Luke, John, John, that's all prior, pre-Jesus, no Holy Spirit living on the inside of you, no Jesus in your heart. They were not saved. They did not have a Savior. He had not died. Everything prior to Jesus, God Father God would do. For us, he's equipped us to do. That's why he gave us his spirit so that we can do in the spirit. It is the spirit that causes the natural things. You get the spirit right, the natural stuff will be right. And so him doing for us is no more. I know that's not that's hard. We're going to talk about why that is. And then we celebrate, oh, Father God did this, he did this, he did that. And the reality is, no, he did not. It is your faith that caused it to happen. Faith, we live by faith. Faith is not a circumstance, situational thing. We live by faith. If you don't live by faith, you should be suffocating. It's like oxygen. Everything out of your mouth, your whole belief system should be based on the finished work of Jesus Christ. And when you know this in your heart and you expect it through the Spirit, the Spirit must respond because the Word is true. And because it's true, then the will of God is made known in and through your lives. It is his desire to be made known in the earth. He has a longing and a hunger and a thirst for his children to reveal him through our lives, and we have to believe. So as long as we're in that season of God will, God will, God will, he will make a way. We have an excuse. We don't want to take responsibility for that. We just rather say what he's going to do. I don't know about you. I know I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again. I love it child does what the heck I say. I love it when he remembers who he is and his responsibilities, and he do he he does the things he's supposed to do without me telling him to. Our father loves it when his children believe the word. And we speak it and we move out faithfully according to his word and his will when we make him large and do not take credit. That's his will for us. And so the myth that we have been saying, I hear it quite often, I'm only human. We're only human. And so because we're only human, things happen. We have limits. There's only certain things we can do. You know, all things, I can do all things according to Christ, only work when I want something. But when things are not going good, I'm only human. 
And we don't say, you know, I'm loaded up. The Lord is living large through my life. I haven't been sick in 50 years. My marriage is on top. My kids are on top. My money is right. But I'm only human. We don't do that. We say I'm only human when things don't look right. When something is out of order, it is our excuse. So if you're writing this down, put myth excuse. Because that's what it is. Most of the myths are excuses. That's our excuse for not being like Christ. But the truth is, according to 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23, let's go over here. It's going to say that you're a spirit. You possess a soul. We don't say it like that, but let's go and see exactly what it says. I'm saying it while I'm on my computer. You're a spirit. You possess a soul, and you live in a physical body. You were created in the image and likeness of God, Genesis 1, 26, 27. You were born in the image and likeness of Adam, Genesis 5 and 3. You were born a sinner. That's why when you get saved, you don't have to repent for sin. You are getting saved saying, I need a Savior. I can't do it. I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. You were made sin. And then once you got a Savior, you were made righteous. See, the thing about sinners is they sin. They're supposed to sin. That's their nature, to sin. So me receiving Jesus in my heart can't be because of my works. It has to be because I need a Savior. I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. It can't be because, you know, I still get high and I sleep around and I steal and I kill and I cuss. It has to be because I need a Savior. Me, at the core of myself, I was made a sinner. And now I need a Savior. See, we have to know these things because we've been taught so many other things. We're looking at works. We are not in the season of works. We are in a season of grace. That's why we get mercy every day, to cover them works. But when you build up and grow your faith, you're going to get more grace. It triggers it. Love causes faith to work, and faith unlocks the grace of God, which he knew aforetime. He set you up for good works, his workmanship, that he ordained you to walk in those good works. They're already there. They already exist. But over in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23, it reads as follows. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, separate you, and may your whole spirit, soul, is your mind, your will, your imagination, your intellect, and your emotions and body be presented, be preserved blameless in the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So you are a spirit. You were created in the image and likeness of God. You were born in the image and likeness of Adam. And then you were reborn in the image and likeness of Jesus. And so the truth is, the last part about being born in the image and likeness of Jesus is over in Romans 8 and 20, 29. Hold up. Because you were reborn, you were made righteous. That one up later, that's in the Bible too. It says you were made righteous. Was that he who knew no sin became sin? In Second Second Corinthians five and I think that's twenty one. He who knew no sin became sin, that we through him may be made righteousness in God. For Romans 8 and 29, for whom he foreknew, he knew us in advance, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Jesus was first. And then we, First Corinthians, Second Corinthians 5 and 17, we, being in Christ, if any man be in Christ, is a new creation. Old things have passed away. They're gone. They don't exist. Our lives as a sinner have passed away. That's in the spirit because Jesus is in the spirit now. He has the ability clearly to be in the flesh and spirit because he's already put on his incorruptible 
himself, and he showed us when he walked the earth. I know on my previous shows I was listening back. I don't know why I keep saying 40 years, but he walked the earth for 40 days, and he was able to be in the flesh, and blink of an eye, he was gone in the spirit. And we were created to be just like him. It is the spirit that connects to the spirit. And so you are far greater than only human. As a matter of fact, if your flesh is leading you, you're probably going to hell because your flesh and spirit are at war. And if the flesh is winning, you're probably not saved. (laughs) You might want to think about that. The flesh is selfish. It came from dirt. It should not be telling you what to do. Your soul I ain't going to talk about the soul too much. I got another myth about that. Your soul, your mind, you can't tell your mind what to do. That's why it's the renewing of the mind through the word of God. Why? Because the word is a spirit. The word is spirit and it is life. And so the spirit has to teach your soul. And what you give your attention to, that's what you're going to become like. But the spirit has to lead. It has to lead. Like you cannot have any substitutes. Go to Exodus 34 and 14. Let me pull that up real quick. When I just heard that, when the spirit, when I said the spirit has to lead, and there is no option. And that's why peculiar people are peculiar. We don't act and think and look and speak like everybody else. Our expectation of life is different because it's like the father. And if the father was like everybody else, then... I don't know, there wouldn't be any sanctifying you. You got everybody else. 30, Exodus 34 and 14. For you shall worship no other God, for the Lord whose name is jealous is a jealous God. So he was a jealous God back then, and he changes not. I'm confident he's still jealous. But how jealous do you have to be to name yourself jealous? Worship is anything that you idolize, that you give your attention to, that you possess in your heart as being of value and of importance. And so if his name is jealous, he did not give you his spirit for you to ignore. And that's why his spirit connects to our born-again spirits. Our born-again spirits have the capacity to teach our soul. Our soul has the capacity to choose, choose life, but choose death. So we are a spirit being, and we have a soul, and we live in a physical body. Consequence. So the consequence when you live by the flesh is John 6 and 63. You chose choose to believe the lie and say, well, you know, I'm only human. That's done the stuff you just have to put up with. The consequence is that your flesh, because clearly that has to be leading you, it profits nothing. Nothing. Jesus over in John 6 and 63. It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. The spirit that gives life. And I think, or I see, let's go to John 3 and 6 while we're here. John 3 and 6 says, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And so it's the spirit that connects to the spirit, and the flesh connects to the flesh. So you're more than human. Stop saying that. (laughs) If you say it in every situation, good and bad, then you might have reason to say it. But don't let that be your excuse. Get righteous indignation when the loser comes into your world and then have questions like, how did the loser get past Father God? He my shield. He said he'll never leave me nor forsake me. How did the loser attack my body? How did the loser attack my finances? What is the loser doing in my house? Those are the questions you got to have. Why is the loser attacking my children? If it should not come nigh near me, nigh my dwelling, that includes my children. How is the enemy have such a foothold in our lives? That's a good question. It should not be. Okay, the next one is, a little lie is okay. You know, sometimes you just got to tell, you know, I don't want to hurt their feelings or, you know, I just, uh, they, they were feeling so good about themselves. Any kind of lie, any kind of lie 
any kind of lie is completely, totally out of order. The truth is God hates lies. Over on Proverbs 6 and 16 through 19, it says, These six things the Lord hates. There are many things that's bad in this world. There are many things that are just horrible and horrific. But these six things God said he hates. He said he hates all the horrible, horrific stuff. He said that these things right here he said he hates. So, therefore, if he hates it, we should hate it too. It should be a burden to do the opposite. Verse 16 says, yes, seven are, and seven is an abomination. So the seventh one is an abomination. 17, a proud look, get more highly of yourself, looking down on people, criticizing them because of what they look like, what they have, how they dress, how they smell, their financial situation, what church they go to, what color of their skin. A proud look. Don't exalt yourself. People are Father God's most precious commodity. He loves us. It is his desire that every man comes and knows the knowledge, comes into the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Every man. The second one is a lying tongue. A lying tongue. It's better not to say anything than to tell a lie. Just hold it in. Just smile. <laughs> Oh, that's a cute baby. No, you're thinking this baby. Oh my goodness. No, you're thinking it. Just don't don't say that. Don't just don't lie. You can be nice. Just just better not to say anything than to lie. I might as well read the rest of them. Hands that shed innocent blood. Don't compromise. When you know it's not true, that's the same as a lie. You shed innocent blood. You lying or are you telling an untruth about something that you know is not is wrong. Somebody's innocent and you just or, or you don't know. That's another thing. If you don't know the facts, you're just going off of what somebody else had to say. Get the truth first before you form an opinion. Don't have an opinion about something you don't know anything about. Get the facts first. Make sure it's the truth before you start spreading and talking about stuff. A heart that devises wicked plans. Second-degree murder is more than with a gun and a knife. Second, well, no, first degree. First degree is when you plan it out, when you plan it out and you scheme. It's not always with a knife and a gun. Feet that swift to run into evil. Feet, got to know something happened. Got to find us, follow the ambulance. Let's follow the police. Find out. Let's see what's happening with this. Did you hear what happened over there? Oh, wow, that's wrong. No, that should not be the focus of our attention. Set your mind on things above and not on things in this earth. So if you're so focused on evil things that's happening, you're always listening for gossip. You're always trying to see what's going on bad in somebody's life. See, I knew I knew that was going to happen. Stop that. <laughs> Feed your mind with good, pure thoughts, because to the pure, all things are pure. Blessed are the pure heart, for they shall see God. See him in it through your life now. And then the seventh one is a false witness who speaks lies. Now, that's number six, a false witness that speaks lies. And number seven is, and one who sows discord among the brethren. Ooh, don't be trying to be a hater, causing separation because you want to get your way. One day we might, I might do a show just on Proverbs 6, 16 and 19. But the point was, God hates you. He hates lies. He hates lies. Why? Because lies is the opposite of who he is. He is the truth. He is the truth there. Everything about him is perfected. And so the lie is the complete opposite, like day and night, up and down, good and evil, faith and fear. A lie is the opposite. But not only that, a lie comes from the root of your heart. It was inside of you growing before it came out of your mouth. And so it goes against all that is good. And so here's the deal with the lie, because we think lies are or fourth, forthright, they're thought out. And so, you know, I don't lie. I don't lie. Well, yeah, you probably do, unaware. So th- this one right here is something that I say often. But if God hates lying, how do you think he feels when we lie against him? You think that's acceptable? And then we wonder why. I wonder what's wrong. We lie against him a lot. 
God will is a lie. God will manifest his word true. That's the truth. He'll do that. And because he's given us everything in our inside of us, it's up to us to reveal it. So here's the deal with the lie. He is in first John five and ten. Let me start with nine. I never start with nine. First John five and nine. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. Ooh, I love that. I just heard that. <laughs> You know how everybody got testimony? I got testimony to tell you about what happened to me. What the Lord brought me through. We received that, boy. Oh, my goodness. You know what the Lord brought me through. But the, what did he just say? The witness of God is greater. If you were in God, you probably wouldn't have that testimony. Okay, never mind. For this is the witness of God, which is he has testified of his son. He who believes in the son of God has the witness in himself. Just believe, believes in the Son of God, has the witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar. Now, he hates lying. But when you don't believe him, you make him a liar. He he hates lying. So somebody is lying. <laughs> it's either him or us, and we know it's not him. So it's just the he who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. He who does not believe in God has made him a liar because he has not believed the testimony that God has given of his Son. So think about that. You made him a liar. He hates lying. But you made him a I shouldn't say you. We. I forgot. I got to go back to we. We made him a liar, but he hates lying because we don't believe the testimony of his Son. But what is that testimony? Glad you asked. That's First John 5 and 11. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. This life is in his son. This life is not external. It's not in your pastor. It's not in your mother, your father, your kids, your friends, your family, last name family. This life is in Jesus Christ. So let's keep reading, verse 12. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. These things I have written to you who have, who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. In the name of Jesus is life. As long as you're using your name and talking about you, when I come back from the break, we're going to talk about that myth, that testimony myth. Let's fix that, too, while we're at it, because we are not going to continue to make my daddy a liar. He hates lying. A little lie is as big as a big lie. The little fish or the whale that you caught is still a lie. He hates lying. We should hate lying, and we definitely don't want to make him out to be a liar. Because the testimony of Jesus Christ is the testimony. I'll talk about that after the break. This is Sharon Green. You listen to the Rose of Sharon show on the Survival Radio Christian Network. All right, you out there. Okay, let's get ready to go to the break. I keep him moving till he catches up. All right, let's go to the. Thank you for tuning in to the hottest station out, the Survival Radio Network. This award-winning network has over 900,000 downloads with 30 powerful shows hitting the airwaves Monday through Sunday. If you're looking for inspiration, motivation, and education, this network is for you. Check us out by visiting www.survivalradionetwork.us. Onward to one million. And remember, we do radio. College is important but it can also be expensive. 
College Planning Services is a group of educators, administrators, counselors, and other licensed professionals that work together to provide the necessary services, networks, and information to reach students that are serious about getting a college education. College Planning Services partners with financial institutions, corporate sponsors, and other major players in the global market to strategize in building a pool of information regarding financial aid, scholarships, and funding information to assist students in preparing to access the essential resources to build upon their path to an education educational future. Learn more at collegeplanningtoday.com and let us help you start your college career. Attention pastors, ministry leaders and nonprofits. Did you know that most leaders cannot describe their ideal leadership environment? Do you currently have systems in place to facilitate a growth environment? Imagine having a ministry or organization with the tools and strategies that are guaranteed to improve leadership awareness in your staff and volunteers. Stop and imagine no longer. Alley Thieves Consulting Group was established just for you, those who dare to lead from the inside out. Allow the truth Alley Thieves leadership to meet your training, speaking, and coaching needs at www.alleytheistconsultinggroup.com. That's A-L-E-T-H-E-S consultinggroup.com or give us a call at 240-245-0503 or email us at leader at gmail.com. That's A-L-E-T-H-E-S leader at gmail.com. Oh, oh, all in together now. We can make it better now. Come on, can we do what? We know that we can. We're open up. Roll it out, roll it out. We know how to dance. We'll cut it down, we'll cut it down. We know what to eat. We'll swap it out. Just moving a little and eating better every day can help make you and your kids healthier. Search We Can online to find doable tips and activities that you can use every day. That's We Can, a message from the Ad Council, HHS, and NIH's We Can program. You are a waste. A loser. Everyone hates you. Why don't you just stay in your car and keep driving? I'm serious. Drive until you run out of gas and get out of your car and walk until you find someone who doesn't think you're dumber than bricks. Could take a while, but at least all that walking might burn a couple of calories. You may not witness bullying like this every day. Your kids do. They want to help, but they don't know how. Visit StopBullying.gov to learn safe, simple ways your child can help stop bullying. Be more than a bystander at StopBullying.gov. A message from the Ad Council. All right. Hey. All right. This is Sharon Green, News to the Rose of Sharon Show on the Survival Radio Christian Network. I pray, I truly do, that you you got something, you know, out of the first segment as we get ready to continue on into the second part. There's no way I'm gonna get through all the um information that I have here. But you have questions. I'm telling you, you can ask. You will not hurt my feelings. I will not be offended by no means through disagreement. The word is clear. It speaks for itself. And when you really, truly know who Father God is, it's easy to figure out whether or not what I'm saying or what I'm teaching or what I'm hearing, does that line up with love? Love is not some after-the-fact thing. He is not some uh, deadbeat father that kind of moves out the way so that the enemy can have his way and that he can come to the rescue like Superman and we can feel so good about who he is. He's nothing like that. And so as we grow up, as greater works we shall do, we believe we shall do, we expect to do them, we won't be so impressed at the goodness of our Father. that will be an expectation. He never slumbers nor sleeps. So to wake up should be an expectation of your heart because you know he was there with you all night. And so anybody coming in stealing your mind? <laughs> Nobody is coming in to steal your mind, and so he's right there. So before we keep going, I understand I have a call on the line. So, Miss Sandy, welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Hi, Minister Sharon. How are you? I'm wonderful. Great, great. Um, 
so blessed by your teaching as always. Just just wanted to interject that, you know, error teaching has gone on for such a long time, and that's why God says study to show yourself approved. And if we don't study, then we just receive the false teachings that have gone over the pulpit for, for years and years. And uh, we don't know or we have not known the power and the authority that is in our mouths. And because we don't speak uh, what the Lord has said or don't realize as he is, so are we, then we do, in fact, make him a liar. Oh, very much. That's why you just have to be clear. But just think, if I say it and then you say it, then somebody else will say it because we're mm-hmm. see what we hear. And so we start saying what he says, then we can make that the known principle. Because we say, you know, we, we get on board with man. We do. We get on board with what man says. But does it line up with love? And so we as collaboration, we as a family, we start saying and believing the phenomenal awesomeness of God, it'll, it'll spread. Unfortunately, we believers, we just like non believers, we're waiting to see. You know, once I see it, I believe it. Yeah, and And he said his word will not return void, and because we have that same authority, as opposed to speaking what we see, we should speak what he said. Exactly. That's exactly right. And so that's why why it's contained. That's why, you know, I do this every Sunday. You know, the weeks go by, I think they go by fast, and I mean, (laughs) because um, it's an opportunity to you know to share, and that's why I open it up. You know who you know. If you like for you, you come on. You can interject, or you can ask a question. Because it's not about me. It's not about me. Matter of fact, it's boring. It'd be like that show that's coming on, Last Man on Earth. So I want to be the only person here. <laughs> I don't want to be the only person who really trusts God. That's I don't want to do that. I don't want to be the one, the only one who really believes that these signs are wonders follow me because I believe. No. It's no fun. I didn't do stuff in the world by myself. <laughs> so to think if I can do more stuff with believers, how powerful is that? Amen. <laughs> you know, I heard uh, a Bishop Karn say, say that he heard God say to him uh, that you take my name in vain. And it's basically the, the same thing as saying he's a liar. He said, my name is I am. And if we're saying I am anything less than what God has said we are, we're taking his name in vain. Well, I mean, well, I don't know. You know, like like I, when we say I'm 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 sick or I have whatever I have the humaguma, and God hasn't said you have the humaguma. Okay, okay, that that goes back to First John five. It says right. you don't believe the testimony of His Son, and then you're right. calling him a liar. And who he who does not believe has made him out to be a liar. And so that's not really taking his name in vain. That's just making him out to be a liar. You know, he gave us the name of Jesus. And so if we're doing wrong and then saying, but in Jesus' name, I know this is going to be fixed. Now, to me, that would be taking his name in vain. I know okay. I'm wrong, but I'm like, you know, in Jesus' name, you know, I'm, I'm intentionally doing wrong and then trying to use Jesus' name to write it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I will put that more in that category as opposed to, but I don't know, the Lord might have told me that. I don't know. You know, I just it's just the, um, how we would use it because it's clear, the Bible is clear about making him a liar. And making him a liar is when you don't believe. And if he says you're healed and you say I'm sick, that's a clear exactly. indication that you don't believe the testimony that Jesus took all became a curse for us. Amen. So that, yeah, so that's. That's just how, but that's, that's, we just have to have unity. It's not even just clarity of understanding. It's the unity of effort. You know, just look around, just look around at the circumstances and see where where is the separation. I think the first scripture I read is about he sanctified us. Where is the separation between the church and the world? Where is, it should be clear. Mm-hmm. But it's not. As a matter of fact, we've gotten so bad that when the world do something, we have a counter a counter for it. Like the world celebrates Halloween, we came up with Hallelujah Night. Why we gotta yeah. have a night? Why we gotta do something that at, at all? Exactly. The world came up with you know 
um, Easter eggs and bunnies and stuff. We should always be about the resurrection. We don't have to have chocolate and candy for our children. Right. But we do stuff to... This, we do stuff to countermand the world instead of being the example for the world to follow. Go along to get along. Exactly. We're supposed yeah. to, peculiar people are supposed to do peculiar things. Because we're when supposed we do to peculiar lead things, in every exactly. area. Exactly. Exactly. So we have to fix that. We have to fix that. And the more people such as yourself that just scream from the mountaintop, like, this is wrong. But that that still comes with a price of it's going may take you to a place where you go against the people that you know you look at as leaders. We we all should be in a place of correction. It's really stupid to want to live a lie and not be corrected. If it's wrong, be willing to say, "Dang, it's wrong. I missed that. Slipped on that one. That's not right." And grow. Right. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Well, thank you so much for allowing me to share. And there's one other thing I just like to say. I, I, I listen not not to you. I've never heard you say it, but I would just like to interject. There's something else that I hear people say. Uh, things like "blown away." That blew me away. There's so many tornadoes and hurricanes and things like that. If they only knew the power of their words, I don't think anybody desires to be blown away. That needs to be checked. <laughs> Oh, that's a good one. I never even thought about that. Well, I don't say blown away, but yeah, that's a that's a good one. Because we, well, you know, the reality is everything that Jesus said, Father God says, it happens. And so we have that we have that same power on the inside of us. It's just that right. sin has, has weakened it over the years. And the more we grow, you know, in faith, the more we're able to develop that. But we have the power to actually manifest everything we say. But since we don't see it, you know, immediately we don't think about the words. But if you repeat something and keep saying it, like, you know, such as my father, you know, he died at such and such age and I'm going to die too, and you keep saying that, you're growing that, you're watering that seed and it is growing on the inside of you and it shall manifest. Exactly. The only word knows says you don't have what you say. Exactly. The only knows okay, I'm not going to take up any more of your time. I'll let you get back to your lesson. Well, thank you for dialing in. I'm, I'm going to text you afterwards anyway. I, I, I'm thinking about you before the show. So thank you for dialing in, and I will talk to you soon. Remember. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen. We um we actually about to run out of time. Good Lord. <laughs> Huh. Anyway, real quick, I, I, there's no way I'm going to go into testimonies because that's a pet peeve of mine. Oh, oh Lord. <laughs> and if you ever study testimonies, you will see that the law, the, um, the um, what's it called? The Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments was called the Book of Testimony, I think it was. Yeah, because it was, it was the truth. Whereas Jesus is the testimony. But anyway, let me see. I got seven minutes. I can do something in seven minutes. I'm going to skip the rest of these and I'm going to pick back up next week. But the um, the myth is that we overcome, that we overcome by the word of our testimony and the blood of the Lamb. That little part right there to say something, the blood of the lamb which took away the sin of the world, or our testimony got some sin in it (laughs) somewhere, but the blood of the lamb and our testimony, and we, we believe that. The more I talk about me and what I went through and what the Lord did for me and how he brought me through, that can help somebody. Yes, it can help them not have to go through it when you figure out why you went through it and tell us how not to have the same issues that you had. Now, that's a good testimony. But let's go to, um, that's a myth. That's a myth that we overcome. The myth is the word of our testimony. That that part right there is a myth. It is not our testimony. So let's go to First John 5 and 4 because it says we overcome by the word of our testimony and the blood of the Lamb. We overcome by faith, First John 5 and 4. 
For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Our faith puts us in a position of overcoming in Christ because he has overcome the world. Fear not, John sixteen thirty three. fear not, for I have overcome the world. So he put us in a position to do Revelations 12, 10, and 17. So let's go there real quick before we run out of time because I know some of you are saying, what? It says right there. That's exactly what the Bible says. It says we overcome by the blood, by the word of our testimony. We always get it backwards. The blood of the Lamb is the word of our testimony and the blood of the Lamb. And so Revelation, what is that, 12, did I say 10? Revelation 12. Revelation 12, real quick, we're going to do this. 12 and 10. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of God and the power of his Christ have come. Let me say that again. Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God day and night, has been cast down. Verse 11, which is the favorite scripture, it starts off with and. And. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? And connects the verse before it to the one after it. Verse 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the, by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. So there's a whole bunch of meaning, just verse 11 alone. There's a conjunction. It connects to verse 10. Verse 10 tells you who they are, and they overcame him. They, they are salvation, Christ, and strength, Christ, and the kingdom of our God, Christ, and the power of his Christ has come. That's they. For the accuser of the brethren, which is the accuser. The accuser is in 10, but it tells you in 11, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. That's why they and the blood of the lamb go together. The blood of the lamb. He was the sacrifice. He was the worship unto the Lord. That's how Satan was cast down. Satan is not cast down because you had some disease and now you don't have it. The Actually, if you're a Christian and you have some disease, how did he get past Father God to you? You being healed was already done when you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Faith should be for the finished works. If the finished works ain't finished, then there's a disconnect. There's no victory in getting whooped by the loser and then coming back and saying, well, the Lord brought me through. No, that's not it. Victory is saying how I'm always hidden in Christ because that's where life is. And so if you keep reading, I don't have enough time. You can read it down for yourself. But to make my point real clear over in Revelation 12, if you read it all the way down to verse 17, which says, and the, and the dragon, because it's all connected, and the dragon has enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of the offspring who keep the commandments of God. He's trying to go against the offspring, us who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. It's the testimony of Jesus Christ that should be on our lips. The more we talk about Jesus became a curse for me. As he is, so am I. Jesus didn't have no tribulation. Jesus didn't have no trouble. The only thing he had was persecution. Next week we're going to talk about that persecution. Because persecution do come to those who have the word. It shall come. And there is a posture that we're supposed to have because it is the enemy. He's a hater. He doesn't like us. But it's Jesus. Jesus should be in our mouth and our hearts. It's his testimony that we tell. And if you tell his testimony enough, all the rest of the stuff won't be of any importance because your expectation for it will be low. And when your expectation for evil is low, that means good can take its proper place in your life. And so real quick, I may come back and revisit it because testimonies is throughout the Bible that will prove my point that Jesus is the testimony. His words, his His will, his life is what should be coming out of our mouth. And so I will see you next week. But before I go, real quick, if you are in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, 
you know, there is an event that you should check out this Saturday on March 7th, uh, Women with the Gift Presents I Survive, and it's a domestic violence event on March 7th at the Paul Lawrence Dunbar High School in Fort Worth, Texas. And the number that you can get more information is 214-471-5605 or go to womenwithgifts.com. Also on March 28th, we have another domestic violence here in the nation's capital at, uh, what is it, Glen Arden. And um, I'm going to post that one. we got plenty of time for that one, but that's another great one to come out because it just makes me mad that people can just treat each other wrong and then we don't say anything about it because you're not a victim. You had an issue, you're over it, let's grow. Let's make this life, life. Let's expect life and teach life. Anyway, this is Sharon Green. This is the Rose of Sharon Show on Survival Radio Christian Network. I pray that you have been increased on this evening and have a wonderfully blessed week, and we'll do this again next week. Sunday, 9 p.m. Have a blessed night. Tune in next Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time for more of the Rose of Sharon Show with our host, Sharon Green, on the Survival Radio Christian Network.